are going to invite the members of LACNOC to come up. I'm going to invite Ariel Weher, Carlos Martinez, Erika Vega, and Jorge Diaz. Jorge Vila, I'm sorry. Y los recibimos con un fuerte aplauso. Welcome with a big round of applause. We're about to wrap up. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm going to behave properly today. As usual, in the space we have for LACNOG, we provide an update of the latest events between one, uh, of latest happenings between one event and the other. We tell you about the work we have been involved in. And for those of you who are new, and it's good that we have new members that join us each event, we tell you what LACNOG is, what we do, and what our mission is and what our objectives are. So now I give the floor to Erica, who is the one who studied for today. So thank you, Ari. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erika Vega. I'm part of LACNOG's board. Let me give you a brief presentation on our network operators group for Latin America and the Caribbean so that you continue knowing more about the activities we organized over this week. Bueno, eh, so those of us who are part of LACNOG, we are a civil society organization, an international association, non-profit non -profit organization, headquartered in Montevideo, Uruguay, and the same as LACNIC. We are located at the house of the internet. This group of operators is made up by all the network operators of the Latin American and Caribbean region. And we now are celebrating the 13th anniversary. Regarding the mission and the vision of LACNOG is that we focus on bringing together the people who operate networks in the region to exchange experiences, to participate in different events, and the discussions we have through the mailing list. And one of the things that we want to be is a reference, or a benchmark on different topics of interest regarding internet operations. What are the objectives we have? What are our goals? The main is to respond to different needs and to be a voice and express the standpoints of this network operators group to collaborate in different processes for the development of the internet and share best practices in the different events we organize. We focus a lot in responding to the training needs of internet operators and other organizations that require training in network operation issues and that we might find in the Latin American and Caribbean region. Furthermore, we actively participate in the proposals and developments of public policies in the forum 
that took place on Wednesday and also in the forums that take place in the different events that we hold annually. Regarding our organizational culture, all the work we do and all the members that participate in a network operators group do so voluntarily. LACNOG has a group which is a staff and I'd like to thank the staff for being here with us at this meeting and so I thank the staff for the support they have provided us at all times during this event and also during previous events. During this event we had a booth where you could come up and obtain more detailed information like the one that I'm sharing with you now regarding LACNOG's operations. Most activities, most of the activities we are performer are done remotely. There are many activities by the various working groups and then we have an event that is the October event that is in person, it's hybrid, just the one, uh, just like uh, the typical cases uh, after the pandemic, we respect and promote the uh, cultural um, <clears throat> a diversity, ethics committee, effective community, and uh, the list is open to everybody that uh, operates a network and you don't ha need to be part of the organization. You just need to identify or be part uh, of a specific uh, organization, but you can be there as an individual. As to our commitments, service to the community, essentially, excellency, innovation, honesty, and accountability at the time of doing our job in each of the initiatives in our group. This is the structure at our organization. So we have uh, the programs committee, and that is why we have Jorgito, Jorgito and Carlitos, Georgie and Charlie, that are part of the program, as well as Hernan. Hernan is part of this group at this program committee, Marcela, Gustavo. They do the job selecting the contents for the events that we uh, do annually and they put together this excellent agenda and uh, the wonderful space that we just completed early this morning. We have the board in charge of uh, the executive management of the organization. It includes uh, seven people, Ariel Weja, who is our chair, Guillermo Sicileo, Edmundo Casares, Hernán Franco, Jorge Lam, Galvao Resende and myself, Erika Vega. Of the working groups, uh, in these working groups, um, they, they developed based on the needs um, that our, the network operators tell us. They, sometimes they come to us with specific needs and the working group generate initiatives on the issues and later on you'll know what uh, are our working uh, groups uh, at, in uh, LACNOC and how you can join them. The community, actually, it's all these people interacting with us and specifically the members that we have at LACNOC are all the members that are registered in our discussion list of LACNOC. Then we have other discussion lists that are the working groups. And as I was telling you, everybody can participate in LACNOC. Mr. Chair, could you please go on? I, she had studied, she knew the names by heart. So what do we do? Our mission, we are uh, not a profit organization. The, we don't want to make any money for our pockets, but we do want to get resources to provide services to the community. Our strong, our strength, or the core of LACNAC for a long time was and is still a mailing list. We focus mostly 
of course, in Latin America and the Caribbean, and that is why all the organizations here sound alike. We all start with lack something. So that is uh, the coverage area. That is what we encompass. But of course, participation is absolutely open. There are people that participate from all over the world. Not necessarily must you have been born in this region or live in this region to be part. As a matter of fact, in the main list, we have many mailing lists of Lucknow. That is sort of the, the main way we uh, in communicate with each other. But the general list where you can discuss anything, we have over 1,200 uh, people. If you haven't subscribed yet, by the end of the presentation, you'll see the web page of Lucknow and you can enter and subscribe. And there you'll meet operators of all sizes. You see that there's a range of technical questions. There are people looking for contacts because they have a specific problem. It's very, very interesting for you to join the list. Uh, uh, and please use it for your own benefit. Contributions to the list uh, are individual. We don't allow any corporate uh, advertising, no politics. There's a code of behavior that is uh, a code of conduct that is quite strict. And, and we hope it will be used by the community of operators for their own benefit. And the, in addition, there, is, there are mailing lists of uh, the working groups. Early this morning, you received a briefing of the working groups, IOT, the Knox uh, groups, and there are other lists that specifically deal with the topics of those working groups. So they're also listed in our website, and we welcome you to join. As a minimum, we recommend for you to uh, register, to subscribe to the general mailing list. There are t 10 working groups. If you have, if you're interested in a certain uh, topic or we see that it is relevant for uh, the community and you want to create a new working group, we can discuss it, we can uh, approve it and assign resources for that purpose. Today, Erika mentioned some, I, d I mentioned others, but that's not written in stone. The working uh, groups can be even ad hoc. Uh, they may start at a certain time and then once you get your goal, you close it, and the organization gets resources to be able to enforce uh, to, to, for, for those objectives to be met. We have a beautiful group of volunteers. I want to thank them. They're here. They're taking pictures. Those are the people that were at our booth, and we are very grateful because they do a wonderful job. Of course, all our work is absolutely at our norm. As I said, it's a non-profit organization and it's purely based on the good, on people's goodwill and the readiness to do things for the benefit of the community and the internet. So here we have the working groups. Uh, here you have the 10 working groups. I, I am running out of time, so just uh, showing them our website, laknox.org or Naglat, any of the two, they're the same thing. They would take you to the same site. We have the social media and all those things that as a Unix, an old Unix zero, I don't understand and most of you don't either. I also wanted to tell you that our organization is, um, well, joined, it was incorporated just a short time ago, although it's an organization that will turn 13 years of age, it managed to be created legally, and it's an organization that today, what would be, I think it's the legal status. Yes, it's legally, it was created legally, and it has the resources to help other organizations and to be able to sign collaboration agreements with other organizations. LACNOG has, for instance, I remember the collaboration, and a collaboration agreement with uh, LACNIC, with ICANN. We have a sort of collaboration agreement with ISOC that is underway. And 
and we have we are waiting for the October event it's going to be a huge event in a place that I can't say I don't want to be thrown anything um, so I invite you to participate it's going to be a huge event there are going to be many many operators we are going to talk about very interesting topics very relevant and we invite you we invite your organizations to sponsor remember that sponsor if you sponsor something then the entire community benefits and if you see that LACNAC can help you or somehow help you approach the board and we can discuss it and we may be able to help you the best way possible that's all thank you yes that was all as we do the job we still have to explain a part so you have uh, the sponsors and there you have uh, uh, the presentation so as a scoop for those of you in the room and those who are following us via zoom let me tell you that we are calling for papers for LACNIC 2023, LACNOC 2023, from the 2nd to the 6th of October 2023 in a venue that will find out late this afternoon. So you have the scoop. The formal announcement will be published on Monday in the LACNOC mailing list, but be aware, if you haven't registered in the mailing list and you're willing to participate, if you want to join the community, please register through the links that were in Ariel's and Erika's presentations. So, the programs committee includes seven people, Carlitos Martinez, I'm almost of Guadalajara University. Many of you know him. Gustavo Mercado, who's here in the front rows. Marcela Orbiskaya, who already had to go back home. Hernan Mogileski, I don't know whether he's here, but you, many of you know him. Uh, uh, Jorge Vila, oh, that's me. And this year, our guest, our special guest, uh, we have one of the most important uh, uh, chairs in the history of LACNAC, Mr. Thomas Lynch. We asked him to be part of the committee this year because we had a vacancy and Mr. Thomas Lynch will join us preparing the next LACNAC. So thank you, Thomas, for accepting that. Communications with the Programs Committee, there you have the address of the committee. And something important is if you already have some type of uh, attempts for proposals or topics that you're interested in, you may contact any of us he present here, or you may also answer, uh, well, Ariel, Erika, Edmundo, Galvao, any of the friends who are always with us, such as Ricardo, or Batara, uh, Antoniello, uh, all those who are with us every day. These are the, this. There you have a long list of themes. It's uh, uh, there are many others. It's not an exhaustive list, but. The, we are interested in network operation uh, related topics and all, all the technology that has to do with that. An important thing is that something that doesn't happen in other spaces where you give the explanation of the technology 
this and that would be more like a tutorial explaining the rationals and how it works for the purpose of Lucknock we are interested in hands-on experience of the use of those technologies that is how each is solving their problems with those technologies that is enriching because other people may learn from your solutions so that is in a way the spirit of what we wanted to present at Lucknock and also at in the events there's also also a space for tutorials where you would have the formal learning of technology or also in at the Lac LACNIC campus courses where you can formally see how technology works. So through this call for presentations, we'll be organizing two options. One are lightning talks which are 10 minutes talks or full presentations for tw of 20 minutes in addition to that we can have guests as well as special panels uh, panels on special topics this is the link where you can upload your your presentations and i'm going to ask carlos so that he can explain the platform we use for the events Thank you, George. Well, the platform we use for submitting presentations is a platform called Indigo, which Ariel uh, prepared, and he's the only one who knows how to operate it. Now, this is a very interesting platform because it's used a lot for academic com uh, conferences and events and the interaction with the potential speakers. Now, you will see that we're going to assess the proposals for presentation. You have to register an account. Many of you might have one already, so you have to create an account. You're going to include a couple of facts and write an abstract as well as a couple of slides. So we're going to assess the proposals for presentations. In some cases, we can ask you to submit yet further information. Sometimes we receive strange things. For example, when you upload slides where you have the title and then blank slides and then one that says thank you at the end, so it's very difficult to assess that. Don't laugh because it has happened. And so there we'll ask you for additional information until we make a decision on the proposal for a presentation this year. We launch the call as soon as possible. This will be open as from next Monday, so you have plenty of time to submit your proposals. When I spoke about the 10 blank slides, this really happened. It's not that you have to have the perfect presentation when you submit your proposal. So put your solves in the shoes of the person who will be assessing this proposal. At least I have to have an idea of what you will be speaking about in order to have an opinion. So the more the information information you send, the better, and as soon as possible, even better. So there's not much more to add. And also regarding the list of topics, we always prepare a list of topics, but this is by no means a closed list. So if any of you, and hopefully some of you have topics that we hadn't explicitly included in the list, but has to do with network operations, please submit this option, this proposal. Or like Jorge was saying, you can check with the uh, uh, email of the program committee, so we'll be delighted to give you an answer. So as from Monday, we look forward to receiving your proposals for presentations to be presented at a place of the world which we are not allowed to mention yet. So to close then, let me give you the program for this year. The proposals for presentations will be received until July 16th, 2023, 23.59 UTC-3 Uruguay time, it is mandatory to send the abstract. Some people just send the title, but they don't include the slides, so you have to send an abstract. The assessment, the evaluation of the program committee will take place from July the 24th to August the 7th. 
the announcement of the results will be on August the 10th. Between August 10th and 15th, we'll be receiving the confirmation of the speakers to say they will be able to participate personally, if this will be remote or whatever. And between August the 15th to August the 21st, we'll be designing a preliminary agenda so those of you who are interested in what will happen in the event have information ahead of time and those who will travel can also prepare your make your travel arrangements so where is my presentation yes i wanted to see if i appeared there well anyway we need to be organized and between August the 15th and the 21st, you upload your bios and your photographs because this will allow those of you who will participate know who the speakers are. And very often, speakers appear in the website of the event to justify the travels so we urge you to be organized the final date for submitting the papers is september the 11th so that would be the final version of your presentations and the presentation as such will be in the month of october from the 2nd to the 6th of October. That is the date of the event. There are many people we know, but there, and there are many people we have been talking to in the course of the week that have very interesting things they're working on. So please, we encourage you to share this with the community. So that would be all. Ah, just something new for those who were worried about yesterday. The heel of the shoe was delivered. And the owner is in perfect conditions. This was just a technological issue, but everything has been settled. Thanks to all of those who were present. And Nick Brazil rescued that heel of the event. So we'll meet in October, and we look forward to receiving your presentation proposals. Okay, okay. Aquí está el código QR para que se puedan inscribir a la lista. This is a QR code for those to register in the list if you haven't done so so far. And Sandra now has the floor. So a big round of applause for our friends from LACNOG. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Carlitos. So if you want to register all this information, this is available in the events website. And I invite you to a 30-minute break. And we resume because we have more tutorials for today. So let's go over to the break.